after doing a few energy problems where it's always the same thing. You take the initial energy plus the work equal the final energy. It gets kind of sameish. So we're going to bring in another concept called power, which is how fast you're changing the energy in the system. How fast you're doing the work. Power, as you would recall, is equal to work over the amount of time that you have worked for. So if you have lots of power, you can do a lot of work in very little time. Unit, of course, this is joules per second, which we will define as a watt. Lots of W's here, I know, but this is W watt unit for power, not W for work. So that's why I tend to write these words out. More commonly though, you might have heard of this thing called HP, which is horsepower. And they provide this conversion factor. So you can just use that to change horsepower to watts. We just tend to use horsepower in our everyday language or describing cars by convention. In that sense, you can also find out the work that you do by taking the power times delta t. And here we are asked for delta t. How long would it take in terms of time? So in part A, we're on flat ground. It's good to draw a before and after picture in most of these things. So here's a car. We're saying this guy is not moving to begin with. And then at time two, you're elsewhere and you have some kind of final speed. In the interim, they say there's no friction. So there's no friction to do work here, but there is a power output. So there's work from the car itself. Let's use our handy dandy chart to track the things we might be interested in. In this case, we have some velocity uh, for this first part. Heights does not change, so we can actually just forget about it for now. The initial speed is zero and we have some final speed that we're given, which is 15 meters per second. Same, same. Ke1 plus Pe1 plus all the work that you do is equal to Ke2 plus Pe2. In this case, we know that both our potential energy is equal to zero because the height doesn't change. This is also equal to zero because we don't start with any speed. The only force that does work here is whatever is provided by the car itself, which since it gave us a power, we have to work out by power times delta t. My kinetic energy is one half mv square. So delta t is just taking that and dividing by p. Subbing in my numbers, my car is and I'm just going to do the unit conversion right in the problem itself to save me some time. 746 watt per every horsepower. And since we have joules on top and watts is a joule per second, we're going to end up with seconds in the very end. Working all that out, 3.2 seconds. Make it a little cleaner, part B. Now we have to climb up a hill as well as to speed up. So you would imagine it's going to take a little longer, right? for the same car, it's going to take a little longer to speed up to the same speed. So here's my one, here's my two. In this case, the height does change. So let's be careful about where we define height to be zero. And up here, height's equal to three meters. Again, friction is ignore, and we'll keep track of our speed and height using this chart. You have zero speed, zero height to begin with, ending up with the same 50 meters per second and three meters to end up with. And again, we'll relate the energy of before and after using my equation that keeps track of everything. These two are zero again. PE2 is not zero this time, it's MGH2. And then there's also one half mv2 square. The work done, again, no friction. So the only work being done is provided by the power of the car, which again is the same calculation as last time. 
subbing in all the pretty much the same numbers with the extra square mgh involved divide by the same horsepower as well as the conversion it's giving it a little bit more space here and you'll see that it all works out to 4.04 seconds as you can imagine because you're going uphill it takes a little longer so there it is power as a measure of how much work you do over how much time and how it all integrates into the whole energy idea